Hi there guys, this is Jacko speaking from Music Nation. How's it going? Uh, today we're doing a demonstration of the fantastic, uh, let me distract this over here, uh, Plugin Alliance in conjunction with Brainworks, the BX Console G and E variants. Uh, now we have a full review on Music Nation, which um, jump over now and read if you'd like, but the purpose of this demo is to show you how this sounds on a big project. Now, uh, we mentioned in the review that it's, uh, it requires a lot of tracks really to hear the, the true sound of the, of, the, of the plugin. Let me just get rid of that over there. Um, right there, there we go. Um, so we just so happen to have a mix in the studio here which has 74 odd tracks, which is absolutely perfect for this demonstration. So um, we've cranked this up here um, into this mix. Now I'll have to run through this mix to explain the various kind of bits and pieces so you see what's going on. Uh, what we've gone through and done is converted all the virtual instruments to wave tracks including the drums. The drums were actually played on Easy Drummer so uh, instead of 16 tracks of individual kick and snare and all that kind of stuff we've just bounced it down to a stereo wave file uh, just for the purposes of this demonstration. Um, but other than that, there is no effects at all running on this track other than the BX console so that we can we can hear. And that includes the reverb and delay. So it's going to sound a little bit flat, but that's totally cool. So in essence, this is pure wave files with nothing, no EQ, no nothing at all added. Only the BX console. So um, hopefully we'll get an indication of what it sounds like. So, so looking at the Reaper track here, you can see um, at the top, I'll just run quickly through this whole setup so you get a feel for it. At the top of our, our group effects, the blue section here, so they're dis disabled. So that's our track reverb and delay. And then heading down from there, we have groups. So we've got a vocal groups, effects, keyboards, orchestra, and each of those have inside them the individual tracks. And you can see those expanded over here. Now, the regions, if you understand how Reaper works, Reaper works in, I'll just expand the whole project here, we have see each of these color regions up the top here, the individual songs. So we have this first song right here, second song, third, etc. Right. So we're not interested in these final songs over here. We're only working on this first region song here. So I'll just zoom into that area there. Okay. So now we're just working on this track here. So you'll see there's missing tracks in here because they're not present in this song. They're in, in the other songs. So for instance, in the vocal group here, we only have this one track here running of Wave Files because she's the only person singing in this in this particular song. Uh, this singer here obviously has no tracks in this song. So that's how it's working. So you'll see there is 72 channels, not necessarily 72 tracks. However, the plugin is inserted. You'll see on the over here, this green glowing button means that there is an effect inserted. So the BX console is inserted on every single of the 74 tracks, I believe there is, in use. 73. 73 tracks. This final group down here is just a backup collection of MIDI files that we're using. So 74 instances, however only potentially, let's call it 60, maybe less, 50, 55 odd are actually being used in anger, but it's still going to give you a really good indication um, of a fairly large mix. So um, important to look as well over here what this is I'm going to show you a couple of specs of my PC as well actually let me jump to that let me just bring this up here this is um, I'll keep that in view I want to show my kind of interesting information but this here is the computer we're running so Windows 10 and if you can see on your screen there this is an i5 650 uh, which is quite old this is probably six years old this computer it's running 16 gig of RAM um, 64 but nothing special um, any modern computer should have these kind of specs, right? So hopefully that's kind of as close, at least you guys are running better than this, I'm sure. So let's just get rid of that. And over here, this is the Reaper performance meter. Now what this does, it's showing our current real-time performance of the machine. So as you can see, the main thing to look at here is the CPU cycles. At the current, so it's 26, 28, floating around about there, doing nothing. Right, of which 25% is actually effects of 74 effects inserted. 
All right. So if I go up here, well, the reason I've done it this way, I've removed all effects other than the BX console, is I can come up to here and click this FX enable or disable button. If I hold down control, it removes all of the effects at once. All right. So now they're all disabled. See, it all goes red. Now if we look over here, CPU performance, 5%, 4%, effect, 0. All right. So it's about 4% sitting idle with 75 tracks. That's about right. So this is the thing we want to be keeping our eyes on is this performance indications over here. Now I'll, I'll refer back to this often. I'm not going to, we don't want to look at these. This is showing individual tracks, right? We're not interested in that. So I'm just going to minimize this up just to show, and I'll keep this over in the corner here at all times, right? So you can always pause the video and check it out for yourself. So I'm not lying. There's no kind of funny business going on here. Let's kind of re-enable re it all and you'll see it's going to pop up to 27, 28, 30% about there, just sitting idle and 25% effects, right? So that's, um, let me just carry on down through the tracks here. So we've got keys inserted here, quite a lot of keys, uh, Jupiter piano, some organs, orchestral section, we have uh, one, two, three, four, five tracks of orchestral stuff. Synths, there's one track uh, with some automation. This, this Bluetooth uh, synth track here has some automation that adds a little bit of um, processing. It's only volume, it's nothing, you know, but there's no other synths there. Uh, the guitar, we have uh, two lead guitar tracks and four tracks of standard guitar. So this is the lead bus and the guitar bus. In the bass, we have one, two, three, four tracks of bass. So one lead bass, one secondary bass, and two uh, synth basses. And then in the drums, we have the Easy Drummer, uh, which was converted to a stereo track. This was running individual kick and snare and stuff, but I just didn't have time to convert this all down. So it's just running a stereo. It sounds exactly the same. Doesn't make any difference, right? And we've got some drum effects and cymbals and stuff. Let me just uh, play this. I'll just get into the meat of the song here. Hopefully it's not too loud for you guys. So it's a fairly... Uh, it's a fairly dynamic, uh, energetic rock song with a female singer. I think it's a good uh, indication of a modern production. Uh, <laughs> you can take or like the song. I mean, as I said, just a, a thing. I mean, this is a, a song we're working on, right? So we're not trying to push this as a, as a released song, right? It's going to be full of all sorts of crap and, you know, it hasn't been vocal checked or anything like that. It's just a in-production track we happen to have in the studio that I've removed all our processing from and just only applied BX console, so we have something to listen to. Um, but I think it's a good indication of a rock track and... Uh, Lisa's vocals, I mean, let me just get to the vocal section here, you can hear her singing, she's got a, uh, she's got a lovely voice, and it's very, um, it's a female voice, female rock voice, right, it's tough to kind of bring up above these guitars and basses and stuff, so. Right. What I know of you is only what I see. So, as I said, there's no compression, no EQ, there's nothing going on here, right? This is only, um, actually, let me just disable the console. This is raw tracks, right, as we recorded them. So there we go. So that's that side of it. Let me just bring over the mixer here. Now, we're using Reaper today. Um, this is a Reaper Mixer, um, so we have, I'll need to kind of explain what's going on here as well, but this does mirror the arrangement screen, so over here we have our master section, which you'll see has bouncing VUs, uh, in this section here is our effects which are disabled, the, uh, these are muted as you can see, so there's no reverb, no delay, nothing like that, then those are the gold faders, the silver fader black tracks are groups, so if I, um, let's get to the vocal group. See, it's just a vocal group playing there. Um, moving down, we have our samples, keyboards, uh, orchestral stuff. Let's just... It's orchestral bus. Um, synths, guitars, what else we've got down here? Drums, where's the drums there? Bass. Right, so uh, 
Now, the interesting thing to look at, the thing you want to look at here is that the Reaper, along the top here, are the instances of the effect included, right? So if you could see, hopefully you can see, um, it says BX console, and it's in dark red, that means it's been disabled. So every track has a BX console. Now, the difference is what I've done here is on our tracks, we have a BX console G, right, which is the modern variant of the effect and I've just clicked on just any random one here you see it's all totally uh, it's not disabled it's factory right it's default setting so there's no EQs no compression it does have negative uh, 95 on the V gain and it does have uh, what does it say negative 60 I think under this negative 66 on the THD the distortion level so there is a degree of color added. I could go for each one of these and just turn all the stuff off, but I, I'd rather not. I'd rather leave it exactly as it comes out of the box. So you've got to keep in mind that it is going to sound colored because it does have that, but that's totally cool. That's what I want, right? This is showing you how the sounds straight out of the box with nothing added. Um, also, each one of these tracks is default in, in that they're all on channel one and two. Now, if you read the review, the cool thing about the BX console is that it is 72, 72 individual channels of somewhat unique sounding channel strips, right? They, um, it's not a, it's just each single instance sounds slightly different as it would in the real console, right? So currently we're using channel one and channel two in this plugin, right? Um, and this is the same with all of the plugins across this entire project. They all use channel one and two as if it was summed, as if they had like somehow duplicated channel one and two across the entire console. What we will do is push this button here where it says random channel all. And what that's going to do is apply a unique channel to every single instance in this project. I won't do it now. I want to kind of hear the difference. And it's something that I mentioned in the review. It is very tough to hear. It is a thing you'll hear a slight difference when we do come to the stage. Every time I push randomize, it does it again. It gives every single channel a, a individual unique channel number. So that's something that we're going to be um, looking at later. So that's basically what it is. So every single one, let me just kind of prove to you. Like So that was uh, the vocal channel there. Say so the sample channel, I'll just click on that. There it is there. It's a G, in, G, uh, it's a G variant, the modern one, all exact, nothing, nothing turned on as it came out of the box. Now the groups have the earlier variant, the E version. All right? This is the E one, it's black. Um, the reason I did that is, it's how I would do it. I would have the channels having the modern sound, which is a, is a more aggressive sound. It's a really noticeably more aggressive. Um, and the older one is a smoother sound. I guess is the right way to say, and that's how I would personally do it. I would I would mix aggressively with the tracks, and then on the subgroups I would have the the lesser, more mellow sound, right? Because you don't want really aggressive. Um, I personally wouldn't want aggressively EQ a, a group, right? You're just adding a little bit of color really group. So that's how this is done. Uh, individual channels have the G variant. The subgroups have the E variant. That's the only difference. And they're all running, no EQ, no compression, nothing's added, right? So it shouldn't make any difference anyway, but that's just so you understand how I've done it all. So you can see across here, let's just go into any one of these randoms. See, these are all the G variants. They're all turned off. Oh, not turned off, but the factory. Let's keep going down here. Just see they're all red, so that means they're disabled. See, nothing's changed. I'm not cheating. Uh, where's the drums? There, let's check the jump channel. There it is there. See, channel 1, channel 2, uh, negative 95, negative 66 on the T. My mouse keeps getting in the way, but it, you can see there, 166 on the distortion level. All exactly the same. So there we go. So if I now, um, just bring this over here. Now if I come up here, control click the FX disable, you'll see. Now they're all enabled and they all go grey. That means they're now working. All right, all the way across here. And if I disable, they're all red. So that's it. Now all this other stuff here is just, these are just sends. There's nothing kind of funny going on here, right? This is just a, a, a raw mix. Uh, the tracks have some degree of mixing just to balance. Um, so anyway, there we go. That's the setup. Hopefully um, I'm just 
trying to m- make it as fair as I can. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, <laughs> this is so subjective to your track, right? All I'm trying to show here is here is a dynamic rock track that I've made as fair as possible. Everything's, you know, uh, right back to factory. No, no tricks, only the BX console installed. And hopefully you can hear what you're going to be paying for with this 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 plugin. So um, let's just run this track a little bit. And we'll just kind of flick through the mix here. This is all disabled. So as you can see, there's nothing happening on the buses here for the delay. There's no effects, no funny kind of anything like that. Keys. The piano. Sits. The guitar that's that delay that's built into the track, right? That's actually in the track. Um, and then our drum on a bass and drums were heard before, so let's just keep this rolling. Everything's disabled, right? Bex console's disabled. So you'll see the uh, the master gain here is quite low. It's because I've r- removed all the processing that we had on the track, so it's brought it back quite a bit. But I'll, I'll just leave it like that. There's no point to really push hard into the into the master bus here, right? So there's no chance of it like I don't know skewing the effects. So um, right. So now I'm um, the most poignant thing I want to kind of point out straight away is the the difference of having BX console just sitting there, right? And what I'm going to do is is enable and disable this um, as the track plays, right? And I'm sure you're going to hear like the t- the difference of the, of the EQ uh, or the channel strip BQ button just sitting there doing nothing, just in its uh, default setting of that V. The V. These two things here is what makes the difference. The THD distortion level which is uh, 66, negative 66 dB, and the V gain, right? These are the two things that really give this thing character, and you'll hear that as I just disable it. So let's stop talking and just play. Let's just crank it up a bit. Okay, I'm going to just start randomly turning this off and on. So the CPU effect here. There we go. 
So hopefully you've you've heard that. Now, obviously, um, if you're listening on a laptop, <laughs> you're probably not going to hear anything. Um, you will be wanting to hear uh, listening for reference monitors or reference headphones. Uh, but even if even then, I'm sure you can probably hear the slight differences. And to me, um, there's a a definite a nice airiness added to it. And and I've I've said it, I've written in the review that it's a creaminess, and that's the way I describe analog sound. It has this kind of a smooth, buttery kind of not low end. It's like a, a low mid, like in the 200 kind of range. To me, just sounds smooth. And there's width, no doubt about that, added. Um, is it, um, it's, 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 it's colour. That's what they, just, that's exactly what it adds. It's colour, there's no doubt about it. Um, I, it's not necessarily a, a, a good thing or a bad thing. It's just different, right? Um, but it is what they talk about when they say, uh, you know, digital you know, lacks a certain kind of, uh, sound that analog had, and this I think is an excellent uh, example of what it is. And uh, not that I've ever mixed on a 4000 series SSL, but we used to have a, uh, a Triton console which was very, very nice. It was only a 60 channel one, <laughs> and I re this is exactly how I remember them. The differences was was not a digital doesn't have a bad sound or a good sound. Um, it's just a different sound. And what this plugin does is give you those options of having that sound back if that's what you like, all right? Hi there, welcome back to part two of this demonstration. Now what I've done here is I want to show how the TMT system works, which is the um, the party trick really, which is what the BX console does is apply a unique track setting to each one of the instances that you have implied across your mix, right? So uh, as with an, an original analog console, Every channel sounds a little bit different. Now the the problem with this is that you need to apply effect to hear it. You won't hear it just sitting there in, in default mode, right? So what I've done is is very very roughly go through this entire mix and 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 EQ compress most of the tracks quite dramatically just to kind of you know so we can really hear a difference here, and that will give it the best chance of. Show, showing the differences when you do uh, randomize the TMT button, right? So what we'll be doing is playing back the track again. I'll disable the tracks a few times so you can hear it. So it's like a large difference now between what we heard the first part and to here because there's a lot more effect applied, particularly heavy compression. Um, and then I'm going to be pushing this button here, which will randomize all of the instances. I only have here going a couple of, I can show you a couple of buses, right? So we have the vocal bus, the bass, bus, and the drums, um, which is the most dramatic. As you can, uh, you'll see that the compression is very, very intense on the drums. Um, of course, just for the purposes of this demonstration. So anyway, and you might notice there'll be a bit of a CPU spike as well uh, when you randomize it. It probably adds about another 10%, I think, from what I've seen here. So um, just for a few seconds, because it obviously swaps over all 74 tracks to a totally new setting. So if you're pushing the limits, you might experience clicks or pops or something, so you want to be careful doing this. But the idea is, uh, you know, when you've got your mix set uh, on a big mix, you know, 50, 50 tracks plus, and then randomise it a few times until you come to something that you quite like and just stick with that. You don't do this every, you know, all the time. This is just a once-off. So anyway, uh, let's just play the track again from the top. And... Um, where's my controls down there? We'll play from the top. It's all disabled at the moment, so um, I'll bring it in, and you can hear like quite a big difference. Um, and uh, hopefully, you'll hear the randomizing as we do it. So here we go.
Hmm, here we go. Sorry, I had to bring that guitar mix down a wee bit during the mix that was driving me nuts. But anyway, so, um, yeah, it's a subtle difference, eh? I can hear it every now and again. Uh, to me, it's not so obvious in the EQ. It's more in the, uh, particularly in the drums, I notice in the compression. Um, the Every now and again, would get to a, a, a mix that was uh, more smoother <laughs> I guess or more aggressive sometimes on the compression that was noticeable to me on the drums um, even now and again uh, on the vocals I noticed too that there would be a, a setting that sounded a bit more airy on the top end so you know it's, it's very very subtle I mean this is not going to be world changing uh, doing this every time right but there is, it's, it's a thing it's certainly there um, it would take some time for you to sit down and go through this to work out which channels you like the best, but you could potentially sit here with a really well mixed track and just go and go for days, go through all them, marking down which channels you like, particularly on certain tracks and so forth, and find some favorites. And you know, Or you could just do what I would probably do is just randomize it three or four times until you kind of came into something you quite liked and then stuck with it, right? Does it change the overall outcome? Nope. It just, it doesn't sound better or worse, it just sounds a little bit different. Um, and sometimes that's what you need, you know, there's a little bit of vibe here and there, you know, so it's not a huge thing. But obviously you can tell the difference between this mix and the original mix at the beginning of this demo was night and day. That's because obviously a lot of very over-the-top EQ and compression was added just for the purposes of this demonstration. So anyway, there we go. Hopefully um, that's showing what you're getting here. Um, there's no doubt that this is a fantastic uh, concept. It's more than just a channel strip, it's a, it literally is a 72 channel mixing console in your PC now, there's no doubt about that. It sounds fantastic and, and just in and, and, uh, idle mode, that is to me very noticeable the difference between idle mode and, and disabled mode. Um, so that's, the mojo is definitely here with it. Uh, the TMT, not overly convinced that it's world changing, but it's, it's a thing, it does it. And of course the compression EQ sounds great no matter which variant, these are all the... Uh, early variants here but the the G series which is the later ones um, which have the kind of silver looking to them they sound great they I mean they're more aggressive than the earlier models to my mind but uh, hmm. so very cool stuff thanks so much for watching this is Jacko from Music Nation check out our full review on musicnation.co.nz right now and thanks for watching the channel comment if you want it'd be cool to hear from you and we'll catch you guys next time cheers bye